welcome back thank you for tuning in last week thank you for watching all the videos on this channel nick i'm sure appreciates it as well but we all do as content creators all the support that you guys give we really appreciate it thank you for the warm welcome last week i took into account some of the feedback you guys gave so not only did i upgrade the studio aka like the edge of my room but i'm not going to say it's the edge of my room when it calls a studio um not only did I upgrade that a little bit, I also expanded on the players I'm going to be talking about. Not just two guys this week, not just Brandon Cooks and Melvin Gordon, which if you know me, you know I was going to start off the year talking about them. I'm going to talk about either four or five guys. I'm not great at counting. Whoever gave me an accounting degree is, listen, they should get discredited. Not accredited, discredited. That's probably not even a word. So without further ado, I guess hit the thumbs up. And then we'll get straight into it. And then later on in the video, when you realize you shouldn't have hit a thumbs up, you can hit the thumbs down. But hopefully me spewing all this nonsense will make you forget about hitting the thumbs down. So let's hit the intro. I shut me the fuck up. Okay, so we are continuing on the topic. Let me sit up a little. We are continuing on the topic of veterans. We're not yet in the rookie time of year for me per se. I know everybody else in the channel is basically talking rookie. So if you aren't interested in buying veterans, you don't have to watch this video. The combine is coming around sometime soon. So I will be ramping up once that athletic testing does come out. But for now, we're going to be talking about guys who are established in the league. Sadly, Odell Beckham Jr. was going to be on this list. But as we know, that man's knee buckled, and he's going to be out for most of 2022, unless Cam Akers' doctor somehow works on the guy, and then he'll be back maybe two to three weeks. He might be back better than, like, I sprain an ankle and come back in, like, five months. Whatever the case may be, he's no longer on this list because I'm not going to recommend that you buy a 29, 30-year-old guy who just tore his knee up at the very end in the last game of the season. So he's no longer on here. But the reasons why he would have been on here are very similar to the reasons why a lot of these other guys are on here. One, free agency. Two, the guy's just good. And he's shown that when his situation improved, he could be good and regain some of the value and regain some of the talent and display the talent that he once had in a good situation. And there's no need to really talk on OBJ anymore. But what I will do is not parlay, I'm not animal, segue, I will segue into the next player based off that point of finding himself in a better situation and hopefully improving and regaining their skill set. That is Allen Robinson. He's currently being valued as a wide receiver three in Dynasty. And listen, I get it. The guy's 29 years old, terrible season. But we got to remember, he was playing with a rookie quarterback and Andy Dalton, who's basically a 35-year-old rookie quarterback. He was not put in the best situation to succeed. He was banged up all throughout the year and we've seen in the past him be able to overcome poor quarterback play whether it's Mitchell Trubisky whether it's Blake Bortles whether it's fucking Christian Hackenberg and whoever else was in between we have seen him overcome terrible quarterback play but I think the terrible offensive coordination the terrible coaching job the injuries he sustained the fact that he didn't even know who his quarterback was going into the season whether it was Andy Dalton, who they said they promised he was going to be the guy, so he was the guy, and then Justin Fields came in and they had no rapport. It was just an onslaught of misery for a guy like Allen Robinson. And listen, there is still a chance that he doesn't return to 2019 and 2020 form. There is still that chance. He has torn an ACL. He's getting up there in age. He's a guy who wins with his size. But I just can't believe that somebody who in 2020 and 2019 – put up the numbers that he did a top 12 receiver in both years he might have been wide receiver 13 in 2020 either way basically a wide receiver one in back-to-back -back years sandwiched between two poor seasons it makes it seem like it was fluky but with the quarterbacks he was playing with I just can't buy into that I just can't get myself to believe that somebody who was as dominant and as good as he was only one calendar year ago just lost all of that I do think there is an element of it him being upset that he was on a one-year deal and had to play with this terrible quarterback play and is like Listen, let me ride out this deal. Let me find a new spot. And if he does find a new landing spot this offseason with his talent, with his ability to be a legitimate alpha receiver on like 80% of the NFL teams, having that talent, having that skill set, I think he stands to benefit. And listen, we've seen very recently that players moving teams doesn't always help. And my argument could be proven invalid when we look at a guy like Kenny Galladay, who moved from Detroit to the Giants, was a clear cut number one. Fucking sucked this year. Same exact thing with Marvin Jones. He wasn't the wide receiver one because obviously he was sharing a field 
with Kenny Galladay in Detroit. But the thing is, you look at the quarterback situation that they left from and went to. They left Matthew Stafford and then left him to go to Daniel Jones and Trevor Lawrence, respectively. So the difference there is Allen Robinson is leaving the terrible duo of what Justin Fields was as a rookie and Andy Dalton. And it really can't get that much worse, so I'm not going to draw that parallel there. I'm just very invested in the fact that I think Allen Robinson is a very talented wide receiver. And for his price, hovering around like wide receiver to 30 to 35 in Dynasty, I'm willing to buy just because I think his talent is going to allow him to produce for the next handful of years and give you maybe one more wide receiver one season and a few fringe wide receiver two seasons along the way. But who knows? He could end up sucking. He could go along the lines of like a DeAndre Hopkins, just get injured and be whatever DeAndre Hopkins was this year and rest in peace. But like Demarius Thomas, another guy like that, who was a big body receiver. Once his athleticism went, he really didn't have any other way to win in the NFL and he kind of fizzled out. So he could go that way very easily. But as rookie drafts roll around, as people start getting hyped over these mid to late second round picks, I honestly think you could flip a late second for a guy like Allen Robinson, who has proven to be an elite fantasy receiver and an elite real life wide receiver and a guy who could stand to benefit in free agency this season now the next two guys i'm going to talk about both receivers one is the wide receiver 20 one is the wide receiver 33 i'm going to lump them together just because they're a package deal in the sense of why they're being picked as late as they're being picked first up is calvin ridley wide receiver 20 this one is simple it's the uncertainty that he never plays in the nfl again It's got to be tough if you draft somebody and they retire in the middle of the fantasy season for you. It's happened to me. I still remember one time. I remember it vividly. Like people say they remember when tragic things happen in their lives, like what they were wearing. I was in my basement, probably curling 15 pound weights, and I got an update from ESPN or Twitter, and it said, Arian Foster has (laughs) has retired. I had no business drafting Arian Foster in the fourth round that year when he was on the Miami fucking Dolphins, and I was heartbroken when he retired four weeks in. I'm not trying to make light of what happened to Calvin Ridley. I'm just trying to sympathize and empathize with those who drafted him in redraft or went out and acquired him in Dynasty this year because that's got to be tough. But now that's passed, right? Calvin Ridley dealt with his demons. He might still be fighting them. I don't want to judge. I don't want to cast any speculation. But that's what's going on, right? We don't know if he's going to play. We don't know what's really happening in that situation. But me personally... Not that I'm trying to capitalize off of something like that, but in terms of dynasty value, he has sank because of it. Nobody's sure if he's going to make his way back onto an NFL field. I hope he does. I hope he gets better. I hope he makes his way back to playing in the NFL. And kind of selfishly, if he does, you are going to capitalize on that value. Now, being that risk tolerant is going to be tough, right? Animal is probably the only person in the world who is buying Tyreek Hill when all that shit came out about him. And he won because of it, right? Ninth, 10th round, 11th round pick Tyreek Hill because nobody thought he was going to play again. Top five dynasty receiver. Calvin Ridley, we don't know if he's ever going to make his way back onto the NFL field again. But if he does, top five dynasty wide receiver. After 2020, that's what he was regarded as. And this is a buy if you are risk tolerant. If you can afford to give up, let's say like a Tyler Lockett in a high second, even a low end first. If Calvin Ridley ends up playing this year, guess what? You just won that deal big time. If he never plays again, you lost fucking Tyler Lockett and you're probably going to pick Terrace Marshall again anyways. But let's be real. Even if you do lose out on that deal, trade a second round pick or a late second, early third and like a bunch of shit for a guy like Michael Gallup and make up for the fact that you just lost Tyler Lockett, replace his value almost one for one with a guy like Michael Gallup and just eat the cost of a first. I personally don't know if I'm going to be that risk tolerant. I know a guy like Scott might have like 50 firsts and like 13 startable wide receiver ones on his team. If you're in a situation like that and you can afford to lose a wide receiver, a middling wide receiver two, and a pick, a a mid to late first round or second round pick, then go for it. Because if it does shoot you in the face, if it does end up being bad in the fact that Calvin Ridley never plays again, at least you have options to supplant that and to make up for that and listen calvin ridley owners might not want to get rid of him that cheap but if you think about it if you had a startup last year you probably picked him second third round you went a year without him and now you're like oh shit a guy who i sunk second round capital in may never play again i don't really want him on my team and if i want to compete i'm going to try to get rid of a guy who i'm not sure is ever going to play again so he might be cheaper than what his adp reflects because in dynasty drafts 
people stock up on like fifth, sixth, seventh round picks. And they're like, you know what? I have four picks in the sixth. I'll pick Calvin Ridley with one of them. If he plays, awesome. If he doesn't, whatever. I think his value in terms of on a roster already and in established leagues is probably lower than where it is with startup draft. So I'm not sure the wide receiver 20 price tag is going to be consistent in all leagues. I would just throw an offer out there and see what you can get done for him. If you can acquire him for anything later than like a wide receiver two value, one for one, I would do it. If you could trade again, like a Tyler Lockett for him, even an Allen Robinson in like a second or first. I know I just said to buy him, but if you could do that, then go for it. And then the other guy I'm going to talk about is Michael Thomas, wide receiver 33. The big concern about him is the guy like hasn't played football in a very long time, basically missed half of last year, missed all of this year. But who cares? The guy is absolutely elite. I know he'll be 29 going into the season, but I'm going to draw the comparison to Cooper Cup. At one point, Cooper Cup was basically the wide receiver, what, like 30, 35 in Dynasty? Because one, we didn't know what his quarterback situation would be. We knew that Jared Goff was absolute dog, like garbage, and we knew that he was on a long-term deal, so people thought he was tethered to that for a while. Guess what? That didn't happen. We thought he was injury prone or at least showed that he couldn't hold up throughout an entire season and look what he did this year it didn't really matter that he tore his acl two years ago because as i said these doctors in la they do some crazy shit with your tendons and ligaments the guy ended up being incredible this season broke all types of records and they're basically the same age so if we draw these parallels and comparisons between michael thomas and cooper cup both at one point had either iffy or unknown quarterback situations right now we don't know who's going to be the quarterback for michael thomas next year Both are on the older side. Both have had and are having injury issues. Michael Thomas currently, Cooper Cup in the past. And both have shown to be elite. The only difference is Cooper Cup didn't show those levels of elite play prior to his injury like Michael Thomas had. Prior to these injuries that Michael Thomas sustained, which let's not forget aren't Achilles, aren't aren't ACLs, aren't anything like major fucking ruptures and anything. It's an ankle injury and a hamstring strain. Before these injuries that held him out a few seasons, the guy was the consensus wide receiver one in startup drafts. He was a top five dynasty wide receiver. And he showed that with or without Drew Brees, the guy was going to be elite. Ike, I finally did something. I provided an image. Throw that bitch up right here. His splits with and without Drew Brees. My head might be in the way. Let's try that. With and without Drew Brees, the guy averages 14.9 fantasy points a game. Half PPR, which would have been good enough for wide receiver six this season so we know he's going to be elite no matter the quarterback that's on the field because he's just an absolute target hog the year prior 2020 when he played those what six seven games his target rate was 27 percent fourth in the league which is just targets divided by routes run i'm no mathematician but fourth overall sounds really fucking good that just means that when he's on the field he's getting peppered with targets i don't care who is that quarterback they are going to realize the talent that michael thomas is and he is going to absolutely eat no matter who is under center i don't care that sean payton might be gone i don't care that kevin james played him in some movie and that's gotta hurt sean payton's ego i don't care that drew Brees is gone he's been gone he's been shitty this last like year or two of his career anyways and michael thomas showed that he could produce with and without him I just think the talent is too great there and i think people are hating him too much just because of his off-field antics he's not even like a troublemaker he just talks shit on twitter and his name is can't guard mike and like obviously you can't guard him he's in the fucking hospital every other day but listen people don't want to like him because he's kind of an asshole on twitter i'm trying to win dynasty championships you can tweet all you want as long as you're bringing me home the gold i'm fine with it and along those same lines of somebody that is not favorable on Twitter or on any social media, we got Juju Smith-Schuster, wide receiver, I think 40 per Dynasty ADP. Another similar situation. Listen, he's been shitty. He's looked shitty. He's been shitty. He hasn't played well, but at wide receiver 40 price tag, you don't have to be the best receiver in the league. There was a point in time I drafted him as the wide receiver one off the board in a Dynasty draft. Listen, Julio Jones was also the 112. David Johnson was the 108, and I think Odell was the one. 109 i took him at the 107 either way juju not too long ago was considered and heralded as the dynasty wide receiver one because he was so talented at a young age and he was so productive at a young age and then ab left and then he sucked and people want to say he sucks because ab left and sure there's probably some correlation there but it's not like that offense was still as good as it was without ab everything kind of fell apart big ben was getting old Le'Veon bell wasn't playing up to his potential he may have already left by then james connor was there he's always banged up their offensive line started to deteriorate this entire team 
kind of fell off a cliff. And even this year, Deontay Johnson was everybody's favorite wide receiver. And still, he didn't have the best year of all time. He was averaging barely over 10 yards a catch. He was putting up, what, like eight or nine touchdowns. If you look at what Juju's done, even in his down years, it's about 10 yards a catch and almost nine touchdowns every single year. So he's producing a little bit less than what Deontay Johnson produced this past year. And Deontay Johnson is a fringe dynasty wide receiver one, whereas Juju Smith-Schuster is forgotten because the highs that he reached in his second year in the league, he hasn't come close to them. But if he was coming close to them, then he'd be a top five dynasty receiver. So although he's flirting with around 1,000 yards in the years that he's healthy and nearly double-digit touchdowns and almost 100 catches in the two down years he had, like surrounded by the years with injuries, people want to say that he's fallen off because he's not going for 1,400 yards and nine touchdowns and 97 receptions anymore. So I think it's unfair that he started his career so hot, then took a little bit of a dip, and people want to say that he sucks now because he can't do what he did when AB was around. The other thing is, Big Ben sucks. He sucked this past year. His elbow was in a cast every other game. He might not be back in Pittsburgh. He was on a one-year deal. He turned down more money from the Ravens and the Chiefs, I believe, to play in Pittsburgh. I think just so we can make TikToks with Chase Claypool on the 50-yard line and then get smoked over the middle. Regardless, I hope he doesn't stay in Pittsburgh. If he doesn't stay in Pittsburgh, I think his value will increase because people will see that he's leaving a situation that seems kind of toxic right now. Uh, when it comes to the wide receiver group and with his skill set that big slot receiver that's a skill set that at least myself as a dynasty player or as a fantasy football player that sounds so fucking lame i really like that whether it's cooper cup whether it's like Devonta adams when he moves into the slot whether it's michael thomas or tyler boyd of years past these big slot receivers that can win after the catch they just dominate they're so good they're so fantasy relevant because they can win after the catch they are peppered heavily in the red zone because they're running out of the slot and they don't have to deal with press as much i think with his skill set winning after the catch and being that red zone monster putting up nearly double digit touchdowns in i think three or five years in the nfl he is going to find his way into fantasy conversations and relevancy sooner rather than later and the guy's still really young he's younger than terry mclaurin still I think he's either younger or the same age as Deontay Johnson, who is regarded as a young stud up and coming. Juju Juju Smith-Schuster, god damn, I can't speak, has already reached the highs and higher peaks than Deontay Johnson has in a similar situation, yet he's the wide receiver 40-something, and Deontay is like wide receiver 13-14. So just playing off of that discrepancy, playing off the fact that a guy like Keenan Allen is the wide receiver, I think, 16 in Dynasty when he's nearly 30 years old. Listen, his quarterback is absolutely elite but at 30 years old i'm not sure how much you have left in the tank juju smith schuster has five years to catch up to that man and i think if you can send a late second round pick for him or even like a michael gallup for him straight up i'm gonna bet on the fact that juju juju smith schuster i'm just i don't even cut this out this is just an absolute mess i'm gonna bet on the fact that jjss still has something left in the tank and if he can find himself and get rid of the distractions that he has been dealing with off the field he is going to find himself a path to fantasy relevance once more and last up because this video is going way too long i'm gonna keep it quick we got austin eckler the running back 11 i got something in my eye but i'm too dedicated to stop i think my contact is folding up and i look like i'm high as shit right now i assure you it's just k2 but austin eckler running back number 11 in dynasty and i don't understand it my argument for this i'm just going to run down the list of the guys ahead of him and tell you why i think he's better running back 10 saquon barkley sure eckler's one year older that doesn't really mean much to me when austin eckler doesn't have all that much wear and tear on his body along with the fact that the Chargers have a better quarterback better offensive line better offensive mind he gets to use more in the receiving game and he isn't as hurt as often so i'm going to take austin eckler there Running back number nine, Nick Chubb, going to do it again. They are the same age. He is not splitting work as Nick Chubb has been. I know Kareem Hunt is a free agent, but even when Kareem Hunt was hurt, he was splitting work with Deontay Johnson, two points in Eckler's favor. He catches passes, three points in Eckler's favor. Eckler still gets goal line work. Bang, he gets third down work and two-minute offense work. Bang, better offense, better team. Take him ahead of Nick Chubb. Running back eight, Joe Mixon. Joe Mixon is a year younger. But Joe Mixon can't even get third downs over a fucking Samaj P. run in the Super Bowl. Fuck that guy. Running back seven, Austin Eckler's nemesis and carbon copy, Alvin Kamara. Kind of shysty off the field recently. I don't know what's going on. I'm not a cop. I'm not going to speak on it. But in terms of usage and fantasy production, 
Eckler was better than him this year. Alvin Kamara has been banged up a little bit recently. He's in a worse offense, worse offensive line. Don't know who the quarterback is. Hasn't been used in the receiving game as much. Bang, take Austin Eckler. Running back six, Dalvin Cook. The guy cannot stay on the field. Does not catch as many passes. Pure talent-wise, Dalvin Cook is washing this guy. But in terms of offensive line, offense, snap share, goal line work, receiving game, give it to Austin Eckler again. I think running back five is where it starts to get dicey. That's when Javante Williams comes in to play. That situation is so unknown, but that's not going to say that. That's not to say I'm going to take Eckler ahead of him because Javante Williams is four years younger. If Melvin Gordon's gone, give me Javante Williams. If Melvin Gordon's back, even then, Javante Williams is close just because of his talent, his receiving ability and upside, potential for goal line work, potential to be a workhorse. That one's shysty. Running back four, Christian McCaffrey. He's always dead. They're about the same age. He's always dead, but when he's on the field, it's too hard to pass up on. And then we got other guys like Jonathan Taylor and Najee Harris, and it's kind of hard to argue against that. So, listen, I'm taking Austin Eckler just because there's five guys ahead of him that I think that he is better than and more fantasy relevant than, despite the fact that he is 26 years old and that is considered ancient nowadays, despite him having less touches on his body. I'm not going to make another R. Kelly joke. Listen, that's it for this week's episode episode let me know if you like the setup let me know if you like the pace of this and me talking about more players than just two or three of them at a time and we'll catch you guys next time with a sleeper video so that should be fun peace